All right, you guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. This is your girl, Wicked Raider 22, trying to get nicely set up for you because if you haven't figured out by now, one of the things that I love to do is to compare champions. And as a beginner player, I've noticed that often the champions that we have in our collection don't quite compare to the champions of some of our favorite creators. And so it's always nice to be able to go back and look at an account that is a lot closer to what many of you guys are probably trying to battle through so many stages of Raid Shadow Legends using. So if we go into the index for a second, and I'm going to be probably a little random with this one, but there are two champions that actually look quite a bit of like, and they are next to each other. Both of these ladies are attack champions, but I want to take a look at Tiger Soul as well as Soul Bound Boyer. Now, as you can see, I have had the privilege of pulling both of these champions and I've actually spent a little time or quite a bit more time with Soulbound Boyer compared to Tiger Soul. And there are some similarities. Now you're going to hear from so many that if you pull Soulbound Boyer, this is one to keep. This is one of those rares that can certainly come in handy, especially when you are going through Doom Tower, for example. Guys, don't forget you have those rooms that are very specific as to the type of rare you're able to use. And this young lady is helpful. She is amazingly helpful. When you find yourself in need of an attack champion that can do quite a bit of damage, to be honest, especially when we're looking at a rare. So we're going to take a look at her kit, compare her to Tiger Soul, of course, who is, eh, we'll let you decide which kit you prefer. Um, I always want to hear, see, and experience those um, comments and opinions in the comment section. But let's go to reviews first, because you guys know I love a good review. Now, there are some areas where Soulbound Boyer, of course, is going to excel. Demon Lord and Fire Knight's Castle are not top on the list. Arena Defense is another area, along with Magic Keep and the Iron Twin Fortress. I'm going to be honest with you. If you are a beginning player, if you've just opened Iron Twin's Fortress, probably 80% of the champions you currently have at level 42 are not going to be highly rated for Iron Twins Fortress. Um, even your best built team is probably going to struggle in that particular area of the game. I made a video on that one, but hey, a video for another reason so you know how this will go. So let's look and see what skills Soulbound Boyer actually brings to the table. So for this first AOE, we're going to take a look at attacks all enemies. That first sentence gets me excited. Has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Doesn't take too many books. Um, I am glad about that one. You do have the ability to increase damage by 25%. And because she is an attack champion, paying attention to just that base level, looking at 1255 is not bad. Speed is at 96, so she's definitely not the slowest champion that you will likely pull in your career of Raid Shadow Legends. But going over, Infuse Arrow Level 1. Attacks one enemy, has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. And that's not too bad. We'll ignore 75% of the target's defense. It's this sentence, especially if you are late early game that can make a difference depending on where you are in the game, like what area you are focusing in. I have very much so focused using Soulbound Boyer in my dungeons. Um, there are some areas of campaign I've also pulled her for. Um, and I've noticed as I've been running this champion to build up her level, I've been pretty impressed with the amount of damage that she's able to put out. And I'll also run both her and Tiger Soul on a team together so we can kind of get an idea of what they can do. Once again, goes up to level five. You have the ability to increase damage by 25%. And this is this skill is on a three-turn cooldown. Last but not least, this is where it gets sticky. Whenever I see level nine, uh, and that cooldown is always last. It's always last. 
Oh, Plarium, you guys got us here. Soulbound Shot Level 1 attacks one enemy, has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Also has a 75% chance of fully depleting the target's turn meter. This, this, it's always those end sentences. When you are building teams, guys, one thing I am learning the hard way, I have to go back and revisit their skills. I need to look at the kit to see what each team member is actually bringing to the table. It's made a huge difference on who I'm selecting based on the area of the game that I'm currently in. Soulbound Shot Level 1 is actually placed on a, a four-turn cooldown if you can make it all the way to Level 9. Um, you will also notice that there is a damage percentage increase of 15%, which is nice. And there is a buff, a debuff chance that can also be increased by 25%. So Bound Warrior also comes with us with a nice aura, so increases ally critical rate in a battle by 12%. Not bad. Not probably the highest number you're going to see before a rare champion. Her kit is pretty solid. And the amount of damage that she is able to put out, especially if you are lucky enough to have some great speed boots um, on this particular champion, can definitely be worth it. I want to say I either have her or Tiger Soul currently running in lifesteal gear only because it's just about the only thing I have on this particular account. So y'all do not come for me on the gear. Okay. Cause you know how we're working on this now, right next door. I'm just saying if twin was a person, right? Just, just, just a little bit more melanin on one side compared to the other same face, same shape, same all outfit has a nice little twist to it. But Tiger Soul is going to be that champion that when you compare, it kind of makes you wonder which one. I think Tiger Soul for me is a little bit more niche. Only 74 reviews on this one. And ooh, for them to be so close in the Barbarian faction, her reviews are not wonderful. So Iron Twin Fortress, she has one rating of a five. That's pretty impressive. Um, and then 74 ratings dealing with Demon Lord, where she gets a four, but it's pretty downhill from there. Looking overall, speed is the same as Soulbound Boyer at 96. Accuracy is actually coming in with a bump of 10. Um, I think her attack is a little bit, nope, they're exactly the same. Her defense is greater as well. So there are some, some plus, some minuses that are running either way. Critical damage comes in at 50%. And critical damage here, of course, is 57%. So not too bad, not too bad. When we're looking at Tiger Soul, whew, you can pretty much notice off top where my biggest issue with this champion is going to come. Nine, nine. Oh, that is so, so many. But tossing this many books at a champion is always going to make me hesitant 100%. With Scorpion Tip, which is that first skill, attacks one enemy, has a 40% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff for two turns. Guys, now that buff debuff can be increased by 20%, which will get you to 25%. But honestly, if I've got to go to level nine, we should be hitting 30, 40, 50% at this point. That's a lot. That's, that's quite a bit. Um, damage can also be increased by 20% as well. Now, going into that second skill, Wearing Tactics. Mm, attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance of placing a 15% weakened debuff for two turns. And let me tell you something else about her kit that always makes me hesitant. There is no, no cooldown here. And this skill is on a four turn. Like that's, that's a big one. You are waiting. And this is one of those champions. Her defense, you can build pretty well. But there are some situations where it becomes really hard to wait that additional turn for a skill to be added in. Now, if you are early game, if you are level 30, 40, even maybe 50, and you don't have very many champions with weaken, this can be pretty important depending on what boss you're running into, just basing it on who you have in your setup. So is she going to be the best champion with weaken? Absolutely not. 
Um, but this is one of those champions. She's normally on one of my campaign teams just because I'm leveling her up as I go, not necessarily using my best gear on her, but just making sure she's available. And if I need to eat her, I mean, I wouldn't complain about probably eating my girl. Last but not least, Tiger Strength places a block debuff buff and a 60% increased defense buff on this champion for two turns. This one could have made things a little bit different. You can place it on a three turn cooldown, but it's one of those selfish skills. And when you run into a champion that has a selfish skill, and there are some that all of their skills pretty much are only serving that particular champion, it kind of changes the way you look at that champion as well. Now, one of the areas that we can run both of these ladies in, let's just do, let's do campaign. Let's keep it nice and simple. Since that's one area, we'll go down to, we'll stay at Brutal. We'll go to an area to see how she does just overall in general. I can't go that far on this account. I'm kind of nervous to go that far. Let's come back to Palace. Uh, the palace is always a good little area for me to kind of test out some things. Let's see if these two, which I don't think they will be able to run this on their own, but who knows? They may impress us. We can always come back and add in another champion if need be. Um, one of the reasons why I even held on to Tiger Soul, um, because I've had Soulbound Boyer. I know that she can be really helpful, especially mid game. You guys can see my girl has already gone down. She only has level eight gear on her. Yeah. Both of them going to go down. Let's drop her. Eh, let's drop both of them down. Let's drop them down from brutal. Let's go to hard. And we'll try that one one more time. And let's see if it makes a difference. Eh, I may back up a little bit. I want her to be able to run and show us a little something. So let's go to the forest. Durham Forest may be a little bit closer to what they were used to. And if they die this time, I'll go in and add another champion just to give them a little bit of support. These are champions that I am running and kind of holding on to. They are not the focus of my resources currently. So let's say, for example, I am doing multi-battles. Um, I will add these two champions in as those that will run and be a part of that particular multi-battle set. So they're building themselves up, but... I'll go back, redo their artifacts. They're still dying on me. Oh, we just have so much death going on. This is what happens when you don't pre-run your battles, people. This is what happens. We're going to take these ladies all the way down to normal. Let's just go to normal, y'all. Normal. And we'll see how they do. And if not, I will put in another champion to kind of give a little support. Um, I have managed on my pay to play. I've gotten Soulbound Boyer up to a five star. And so she is kicking out some pretty nice little damage. With Tiger Soul, I pulled her on other accounts. I know one account she's vaulted right now. She's one of those that I would only keep her in a pretty niche situation. And I'm just really now thinking about it that Soulbound Boyer on this particular account is at a level 25. But what I could definitely do is switch out with my pay to play. Um, just to kind of give you an idea. And what you're looking at, even though they're about to die, my girl is trying, but she's going down. If you compare, this is a comparison. And their gear is pretty much the same. It is very much the same um, at this point. I'm only putting in that gear that's, you know, kind of your leftover. It's probably been pulled from another champion and it was based on them. I could put a little support, maybe a mother superior in there. Eh, let's throw a little life taker in there, see if it makes a difference. But um, I ran Soulbound Boyer and Tiger Soul on a team with Eris and Sniper. I ran them on teams with Sniper and El Hane, just so everyone has a bow, it's kind of a thing. Um, and it turned out really well. With Soulbound Boyer at level five, and as you start working through her masteries, especially, you can kind of see how Tiger Soul is really vulnerable just based on the artifacts that are currently on her. 
but it's one of those champions that if I go into a special area, if I needed her, for example, maybe for faction wars, which is another spot that a lot of us struggle with, there are certain affinities that you're going to gravitate toward. And you kind of figure out that all of your champions are in the same area. So if you take a look here, comparing Soulbound Warrior to Tiger Soul, not really close, kind of what I expected. The other thing is just looking at the amount of support needed for Life Taker because Tiger Soul is dying on me pretty early, but I'm, I need to ascend her and do a little bit more work on her. It can definitely make a difference as well. And I'll run this little group one more time. When you are pulling champions and not sure if you should build them out or not, instead of keeping them on your active roster, you know, on the left-hand side where you can see them and interact with them, I often recommend, guys, you just vault them. Place them in the vault, walk away for a little bit, really pay attention to your resources, do a little bit of digging to find out, to find out when those next events are going to come up. And if there's an event or a tournament that will allow you to build that champion out with less strain, then I would certainly go for it. So um, right now, being that I'm kind of straddling pay to play about level 54, 55 ish. And then I'm looking at Wicked Raider that's that's getting closer and closer to the level 42 that we've been talking about. It really makes a difference. So both of these ladies pulling out the same amount of damage, even though Life Taker is at four star, um, has not been ascended. Soulbound Boyer four star is fully ascended for this particular level, but overall level is still a little bit lower. So even the ascension does make a difference. Tiger Soul, of course, my girl is still dying out. So I'm going to run her on a campaign food run just to kind of build her level you will end up having several champions that will have similar skill sets. And it gets to a point where you will then come in and truly start making those changes. When I look at Soulbound Warrior overall, very basic gear. Um, probably farming gear has been the number one thing I haven't done a lot of. I certainly want to work through some of the dungeons and improve here and then work on my availability of glyphs is another one. When faction wars, um, you know, as they open and close, you start to really pay attention to where you have the most champions at. And it makes you think, even if you go in now, for example, it makes you start thinking about these are areas where I'm no longer competitive because I have no champions that fall into this category. So I know for me, I get excited when Dark Elf Crypt, for example, opens. Um, sometimes I can do pretty good in Shadowkin, depending on which particular account I'm pulling from. But this is what has really made me slow down and think, should I keep this champion or should I not? Should I build this champion out or should I not? It's always one of those questions. So who or what champions, because some of us or most of us have more than one, what champions have you thought about building out, but you haven't built out so far? Would love to see that one in comments. Don't forget, guys, I am trying, trying, trying to get ready for the next Clan v. Clan. We've got to get up to a minimum of 10 players. Right now, we don't have 10 members. We only have four. So you guys have got to get in here. Go ahead and join. If you type in 22WK, it will pull up Wicked Raider 22. We would love, love to have you guys. You will notice that my pay to play is going to be the clan leader. But I promise you, Kakoa B is Wicked Raider 22, just in the paid version of it all. We've been saving up shards, um, definitely going through, doing missions. If you take a look, guys, it's been, what, maybe a week, less than a week that we've been rolling with this particular clan. So we, we're getting these points up. Our clan power, we would love to exceed. We have plenty of space, so we need 26 more of you guys. Don't worry. You still have time. Feel free to sign up. Feel free to sign up a friend. Feel free to sign up all of your accounts. 22WK is what I need you guys to just drop in for me so that we can make things happen. There's nothing like very much so being a part of an active clan. And that's what I'm looking for.
I won't hold you guys any longer. I'm always excited when you stick, stick in here with me. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe for me. We release videos every Monday through Wednesday, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. and would love to hear from you. You guys keep playing and I will talk to you soon.